One of the more fascinating roles of the Holy Spirit on my mind and on my heart recently is that He convicts us concerning righteousness. And that word convict is used in Scripture exactly like we would use it now, to be declared guilty of something. See, before we are in Christ, in John chapter 16, Jesus says that when the Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit comes, He will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment, concerning sin because they do not believe in me. So in order to come to Christ, we have to become aware that we have a sin issue and that our righteousness and that our own good merit cannot get rid of the sin. I like to say sin is like glitter. Once you notice it and you try to wipe it off, now it's over here. Oh my gosh, you try to wipe it on this. And then before you know it, it's absolutely everywhere. And you look down and you're just covered in this stuff called sin. How in the world do I get rid of this sin? I can't do it by feeding the poor. It's not by giving money to my church or even stopping the behavior or stopping doing all of the bad things. That's not going to get rid of this stuff called sin. It's only because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross that we can be forgiven, that he extends to us this grace through our faith. So it requires the conviction of the Holy Spirit for one to repent and change their mind that their own good works can do anything about this issue of sin. And one way we know that we actually believe and that we're actually in Christ is then the Holy Spirit convicts us concerning righteousness. He says, no longer you are guilty of sin, but now he says you are guilty of being righteous because Christ is righteous. Look at verse 14. He says this, and he will glorify me, talking about the Holy Spirit, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Is Jesus not righteous? Absolutely, he's righteous. So the righteousness of Christ gets declared to you. That becomes your status as a son of God. And it's not because of anything that you did. It's not because of your good works. It's not because of your good merit. It's not because you abstained from certain things, but it's because the Holy Spirit showed you your need for Jesus and that sin cannot enter into heaven and we must be in right standing with God to spend eternity with him. And the only way that can happen is to believe in what Jesus did on the cross and that his blood atoned for your sin and that you've received that grace by faith and now you are forgiven of your sins. Hallelujah. This is the gospel message. Look at Romans chapter one. I love this scripture. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also the Greek for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith or the one who by faith is righteous shall live. So it's trusting in Jesus as our righteousness. We need to be reminded of this even as believers in Jesus Christ. This is why the Holy Spirit has to now convict us concerning this righteousness on a regular basis. Paul says in Romans chapter 6, you're either a slave to sin or a slave to righteousness. We're not somewhere in between. Hallelujah. I love that. That is the good news of the gospel. So the Holy Spirit says you are righteous because you are now in Christ. Do you remember Galatians 2.20? I love this scripture. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Hallelujah. It's no longer Adam who lives, but it's Christ who lives in me. In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God for if righteousness were through the law or through my good works, then Christ died for no purpose. He is our righteousness. I love 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, that says, For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 
I hear people all the time who profess to be Christians who hear this and they have trouble understanding this. They have trouble receiving this. I was one of them. I had trouble with this. I was like, no, but I have to do this and I have to do that. Where does it say that? Where does it say that? Christ is your righteousness. You cannot earn good favor with God. It's only through your faith that you are righteous, and the Holy Spirit confirms that in you. You are righteous because Christ is righteous, and you are in Him, and He is in you. Abide in me, and I'll abide in you. The works, the keeping, the commandments, the good things that we do flow from that place. See, it's religion that says do all the works in order to be saved. But it's Christianity that says that once you're saved, the good works flow out of that place. Does that make sense? It's flip-flopped. It's backwards. Good works flow from. It's a fruit. When we are saved, it's like we are born again, right? We were dead in our trespasses. We're raised to life. It's like there's a new root system installed, and now everything that comes out will be a fruit of what just happened. I hope that makes sense. That is the fruit of your righteousness will be good works. It will be to love God and love others. It will be to treat your neighbor as yourself. It will be to keep the commandments of God and that they are not burdensome. But we don't do any of this to be saved, but because we are saved. This revelation of God's grace and this new identity in Christ will actually empower us to abstain from sin. We live in a fallen world, so none of us are going to be sinlessly perfect here and now in this life. The Bible doesn't teach that. But 1 John 2 puts it this way, my children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And like he writes in the previous chapter in verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But the point is this, Your identity is no longer in sin. Your identity is now a son or daughter of the Most High King. Your identity is now the righteousness of God. And that is why the Holy Spirit convicts us concerning righteousness. I have to admit that when I first read this and the Lord was dealing with my heart about this, I was offended. I was aware that I was guilty concerning sin, but for the Holy Spirit to speak to my heart that I was now guilty concerning righteousness, the first thought that popped in my mind was, well, that's too good to be true. And then the next voice I heard, which I believe with all my heart is the Lord. He said, that's the point. That's what grace is. I'm extending to you what you do not deserve. It's not by your good works, Adam. It's not by your good merit, Adam. It's not because of your ability to abstain from this or that, Adam. But it's only because of what I have done on the cross. And if you trust and believe in me, then you are righteous because I am righteous and I am taking what is mine and I'm declaring it to you because you are in me and you are my son. And now your identity is righteousness. This is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're still here and listening to this video, I want to say thank you so much for sticking around and watching the whole thing. If you're not subscribed, I would love to have you join the channel and ask you to hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button. And that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people. But thank you so much for watching today and I will see you in the next one.